Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again in today's video. An entitled terrible Karen manager berates and fires a so-called worthless unpaid intern. The issue is that Karen just fired the company owner who is her boss. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the story. In March of 2004, I started a clothing recycling business out of my garage. The concept is simple enough. You bring in your clothes in return for credits and then you can buy things with said credits that others have brought in. You can also buy credits. I was a broke college student when I created the concept with my only customers being the other broke college students. But soon one of my teachers took interest in the idea and helped me get investors. Flash forward many years and the business is a big success. The main concept is still the same, but now the shops are located all over the country and my annual income is certainly not to be messed with. I also have over 1000 employees split across the country, I work in the main headquarters obviously and my experience with my employees there has been a good one up until this point. I would like to say that I am a fair boss, mainly because I came from little to nothing, so I was not raised to think that everyone was below me if I had money. I also like to do my bit to help out, so if I have a spare minute I will go on a coffee run or fetch bagels. I also don't believe in everyone having to wear an uncomfortable uniform, so everyone including myself just rocks up in whatever. Other than Michelle. Michelle is one of my newest employees and I had not met her yet. I had only seen her walking to and from meetings in a tight suit suit that people have told her she doesn't have to wear but she refuses to wear anything else. She is our new floor supervisor so she looks after a large team below her hiring new members who she deems suitable to the job. I lose track of who works at the headquarters to be honest, I don't do much of the hiring myself and there's far too many people to keep track of. I know it probably is not a good trait but I do try my best to make everyone feel as comfortable as possible even if they have not really met me. One morning I went out to fetch some coffee for my team upstairs. And when I came back I remembered that we were due for a meeting with Michelle's team to see what the current statistics and analytics were like. I walked into the meeting room with my arms carrying 8 cups of coffee and accidentally got my foot hooked on the side of the bin near the door. Well, the coffee went flying as I stumbled to the ground, I heard a slight pop as the coffee had spilled onto a photocopier, clearly damaging it beyond repair. To say I was embarrassed was an understatement. A few of my closest employees and friends came rushing over to help me up. Silence! Michelle screeched as they started asking if I was okay. We all looked up with rather amused looks on our faces and that is when I realized that she probably did not know who I was. Other than myself she would be the highest ranking person in the room and clearly the power had already gotten to her head. How dare you interrupt in such a manner? None of us even called for coffee and now look, you've set our meeting back by 5 minutes. She had a stern grimace on her face, lips pouted and cheeks reddening by the second. Ma'am, I think you are miss. I tried to correct her to avoid her embarrassing herself further but she cut me off. Did I ask you a question? Then you cannot speak. Now you're going to go downstairs and get everything you need to clean this up while we move the meeting next door. And just so you know, the repair cost of that photocopy machine will be coming out of your own pocket. She was outright screaming by the end of her speech, I decided to just go along with it, after that she didn't deserve to be saved. My own pocket? That's right, you are fired! She smirked and looked down her nose at me. That'll teach you to be more professional in such an environment. You're not firing me, I replied straightening up and glaring at her. Excuse me? Who do you think you are? You're nothing but some worthless unpaid intern. David would never hire someone like you. I'm sure he didn't have anything to do with the choice. David being me. Oh he wouldn't? It seems to me he also didn't have a say in the hire of you either. I remarked and watched as the faces of the people around me started registering what I was doing and some of them smirking slightly. I cannot believe this. Get out right this instance, you will never be worthy of stepping into such a building ever again. Well I think I will be staying here, in fact I'll be sitting right there in that seat. I pointed to the head of the table where the files I would be looking over were set. She did not clock on unlike the others who had started snickering. Quiet, she yelled at the others. Now I'm calling the police, pass me my phone. At this point I was about to interject but every time I started speaking she shushed me and soon enough she was speaking to the police. In a matter of minutes they were around the, at the building and had been led up to our meeting room. This imbecile will not leave, she told them. The police escorted me out and in a matter of minutes I had explained what was going on and shown them the proof of my ownership of the company and the building. 
I apologized for the waste of time and gave them Michelle's contact details. I figured they would want to have a word with her at some point or another. I walked back into the meeting room. Michelle looked like she was nearly gonna blow a fuse. What did you? She started. Shush, please, you're hurting my eardrums. I started and finally she stopped interrupting. Who here has a negative interaction with Michelle because I get the feeling that she's not the easiest to work for? I gazed around the room, watched as a few hands popped up. I started calling upon people to tell me what was going on. She forced me to come into work while I was sick. Same here, but I had booked a holiday off and she made me come in. She did not record any of my overtime last month. Me neither, and she made us do overtime nearly every day. Michelle looked so flustered. What do you all think you're doing? I'm your boss and you should treat me as such. He is a nobody and he doesn't need to know any of this. More to the point, I forbid you to speak badly of me to anyone. Michelle, I began looking over at her. I'm the company owner. I watched out of the corner of my eye as smirks grew on people's faces and as her face went as pale as snow. Sir, what? You are... She stuttered, sitting down in her chair. I think you should be very careful about your next words. How dare you embarrass me like this? I should report you. She quickly flipped the switch after this point. I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have been so rude. I just have so much on my plate and I thought you were an intern. Well, that is no excuse. I expect everyone who works for me to treat everyone as equals. Now, get out. I need to think long and hard about what to do with you. I picked up my phone and called security once she started refusing to leave. As it turns out, the person who hired her was her mother, who happens to be an amazing worker, so after a stern talking, I let it go. I launched an internal investigation on Michelle, speaking to every employee who works around her. The things I heard were genuinely disgusting, she had made many racist, homophobic and body shaming comments to most of her colleagues. I felt ashamed that I didn't know about any of this and I soon set up a system for people to anonymously report people or anything that was going on at work. Michelle, come to my office. I called a week after the first incident. Yes sir, what can I do for you? She said in a cheery tone. I had heard from the others that she had been on her best behavior last month. You know you're fired, right? That is when she kicked off, she got up and started throwing things all over the room, screaming at the top of her lungs that it wasn't fair. And what did she do to deserve this? I called the cops and had her escorted immediately and let everyone in the industry know that Michelle is not someone I would recommend employing in any sort of capacity. I also got a restraining order on her which was effective for myself, the company and every single one of the employees who had issues with her in the company. From then on, I made sure to be more in the know of who we hired and led onto the team. And yeah, Ripe Stars, if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turning on the bell as well as leaving a comment and liking the video if you want to support me. Thank you so much. This next revenge story starts like this. Many years ago, my daughter has been fuzzy all day long. My wife was ready to pull her own hair out and therefore I took my daughter with me to the store. She was very young and pretty with the cutest little purple wheelchair secondary to Spina Bifida. We get to the store, unload her wheelchair from the Chevy Suburban, she climbs down into said chair and off we go. After shopping is done, we are back at the Suburban reversing the process to load her up and stow the chair. As I am loading said chair, the dude pulls up next to me in a new Corvette still with paper tags on it. Convertible containing dude and his trophy, a uh, significant other. I casually mention that he is pulled into a row of handicapped spaces without a handicap tag or placard. He says yeah, I know and saunters off to shop with his SO. Well, I'm a little pissed at this moment but I don't want to do damage to such a beautiful car. Then an evil thought enters my brain. I go to the card storage just in front of where we are parked. I put cards in a loose formation around his car. Security guard comes out but just watches. An off-duty city cop also comes out and also just watches. I proceed to put several layers of cards tightly packed together 360 degrees around his car. I approach the guard and city cop and explain that dude was using handicapped space for convenience not due to an accessibility problem. I point out that no cards are touching his car so no damage but that he sure as hell has an accessibility problem now. They both crack up laughing at this point. The cop says that he hopes the guy complains because he will write a ticket to the dude. I laughed quite a bit over this and quite frankly still do every now and then. ETA, to answer a common question as to why the cop would not just write the ticket straight away, he couldn't. In Texas at the time on private property, they could not write one unless the property owner and manager called or the person otherwise engaged with the officer. 
He was hoping the guy came to complain so the cops could then engage with the dude and then write a ticket. ETA 2, this may have been a city ordinance or policy, as several former and current Texas cops have said this was not a state law. And the next one is another revenge story. One night I had a knock at my door from the funeral home owners down the street. They told me that they had just bought the property between us and were gonna demolish their house to build a parking lot. They said that they wanted to build a nice vinyl fence between us and that they would pay for everything. All they needed from me was to sign an agreement saying that it was okay for them to build the fence. This agreement was three pages long. I told them that I would be happy to take the agreement and read slash sign it tomorrow because it was already 9pm. They told me that they could not leave the document with me and that I had to sign it right now. I responded that I don't ever sign legal documents without reading them completely and that I don't have the time now to read it and then suggested that they mail me a copy. After this they got very pushy and told me that I have to sign it and I have to do it right now. At this point I told them to get off my property and slammed my door shut. I did some research and city code required them to build a very specific type of fence because we had two different zonings of property next to each other. A bit later they built a foam core concrete fence that was 8 feet tall. It looked good and to an untrained eye it looked to meet the requirements of the city ordinance. At this time I also received a letter from their lawyer about the old wooden fence that they also left standing on their side of the property line and that if I tore it down, repaired it or did anything else to it, they would take legal action against me. So now cue my petty revenge. I found a city ordinance that outlaws a fence within a fence. It basically says there's only one fence allowed per property line. I took that to the city planning commission and they forced my neighbors to remove the wooden fence. I refused to allow him or his workers onto my property. This meant that they had to go over the 8 foot concrete fence to remove the old wooden fence. After that was completed I went back to the planning commission to demand that the correct fence be built. City ordinance stipulated an 8 foot tall solid masonry fence and explicitly forbid the use of foam core fencing in this situation. The commission sided with me and made him tear out his brand new fence. After that he put up a temporary chain link freestanding fence between our properties. The wind kept blowing it down so I asked him to take care of it so that my chickens didn't get out of my yard. He told me to figure it out myself, enter the malicious compliance. So I welded his rented fence pieces together, they were no longer portable but they stopped blowing down. They were also taking a long time to get the permanent fence in so I ordered a Borat style neon green speedo. You should google it to really understand. I then wore that during the nights in the summer while I sat at my fire pit. The guests of funerals could clearly see all of me lit up in the twilight. I like to think that this helped motivate them to put in an opaque fence. When he finally put in the correct fence his workers trampled about 30 feet of my rose bushes and killed them so I had the planning commission order him to pay me damages for the roses. These workers also broke some of my sprinklers and I was able to force him to repair those too. To top this all off he stained his side of the new fence and left mine with only stain splatters and stain drips. Since I was betting 1000 I went back to the city ordinances and found one that prohibited this exact situation. Back to the commission I went, after more fighting he had to pay to stain my side of the fence too. It took five and a half years of petty revenge but now I have a beautiful tall fence to keep my yard quiet and safe. It added a lot of value to my property too. Hey Mr and Mrs Funeral Home, sign that. And the next one is an am I the a-hole story. So I'm getting married this weekend and I'm looking forward to it so much. My soon to be wife is amazing and her family is just as awesome. My family on the other hand, well let's just say I'm the black sheep of this family because I'm not an entitled person or arrogant SOB. So I have a lot of family coming into town from up north. We live in Texas and extended family lives mainly in the upper midwest. And I did not even want to invite the majority of them in the first place because I don't know who they are and don't have much of a relationship with them. A few weeks ago my mom said that she and one of the cousins talked about having a post wedding sandwich dinner at my mom's and dad since a we are not having dinner at the wedding and b this would be the first time a lot of this extended family has gotten together down in Texas. So my mom said your dad's cousin and I are thinking of this after your wedding around 5.30 and then going to your brother's hockey game at 6.15. Me, okay, have fun. You're not gonna come? No, wife and I are going to order pizza and enjoy our first night as man and wife. Oh okay, and I thought that was that. Two weeks later though, same thing. Mom, it would mean a lot if you and your wife would come have dinner at the house with everyone. Me, I've already told you that we have plans. 
I know, but it would mean so much to the family that you never get to see. We have plans, sorry. Okay, sorry for trying to do something nice. Meanwhile, I'm filling in my soon-to-be wife on this and she's like, is your family crazy? That's our wedding night and we get to spend it the way we want to. I tell her I know, but this is what is happening and it probably won't be dropped. Then last night, I'm watching the Stars vs. Blues game with my mom, youngest brother and his girlfriend when my mom says, your other brother is texting you, please answer him because he's bugging me now. My other brother, who I care for but don't have the greatest relationship with, texts me, Hey, what's this? I hear that you are not coming to dinner after the wedding. It's exactly as it sounds. Why not? We have plans. To do what? Husband and wife plans. He sends back a puking emoji. I text the future missus saying, We are not coming to my mom's Saturday. She cannot believe they are still trying to get us to go and doesn't understand why they won't take no for an answer. I asked my grandma about this who said, It's your wedding. Don't tell anyone what you're doing or where you're going afterwards. You spend the night with your wife. You're entitled to that. Comma number one, not the a-hole. Don't forget to turn off your phones the day of the wedding. These people will be relentless in their efforts to contact you. I also suggest making sure the only two people who know where you are staying are you and your fiancé. Your family definitely seem like the type to surprise you. Comment number two, not the a-hole, and you're already doing a good job of standing up to your family and not putting your wife in the middle. Good job, sincerely, you're being mature and focused on your marriage. Enjoy your first night as man and wife, however the hell you want. P.S. Staying in with pizza and being together sounds great. And here, yeah, ripe stars, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Do you think OP is acting like the a-hole here or not? And the next one is titled, Stop Wasting My Time. Backstory, I have worked a lot of jobs in my life and been turned down from a few. One such place that turned me down was a car dealership. After a stint with a certain long distance phone company as a telemarketer, the sales bug hit me and I wanted to sell cars. I knew there was money to be had and wanted a piece of it, plus I'm a people person so I would get to interact with people on a daily basis. One thing to note about me is that I'm a male and have long hair. I don't like having short hair, I have no self esteem with short hair, I hate it. I went around to several dealerships one day, talking with management trying to get a feel for the industry. One place in particular sold Volvos, I ended up talking with Tommy, the sales manager for a bit and it turned into an impromptu interview. I spoke with him and John, who was the highest ranking salesman there, or some other BS I don't remember, it was like 17 years ago, anyway, I ended up sticking around for a couple of hours during these interviews and we talked about cars, the market, expectations, experience, etc. After a couple of hours we got to the dress code. Now I was wearing slacks, dress shoes and a collared button up shirt and my hair was in a tail and multiple hair ties in it to keep it neat. I also had some product on the top slash sides to prevent any flyaways. My hair was brought up only briefly, I was asked if I was willing to cut my hair and I answered honestly, I would for a certain amount of money. I knew it was commission based sales but I made that decision a while ago about my hair and then we moved on to other topics. And by the way guys, I'm not sure, but is that common that people will ask you in a job interview if you are willing to change your hairstyle? I mean, okay, if you have like a super unique hairstyle, but that seems a little bit far reaching for me. Anyway, after around 4 hours or so, I am sent on my way and told to be there at 8am the next morning. If I was late, they would send me home. Sweet. Hired. So I went home and started getting prepped. Called my brother to ask advice since he had been in the industry for a while and got advice. The next day I show up at 7.55 am and I am told they are in a meeting, just have a seat and wait. They don't get out of the meeting until closer to 10 am and Tommy sees me and tells me they did not talk about it yet and to go home they would give me a call. Now I've been in sales and I know how things work, I knew what that meant but decided to play along. I go home, waited until the next day and then called. Tommy got on the phone, yeah, we are looking for someone a little more company oriented, thank you for your time, and hung up. I knew it was because I would not cut my hair and I did not care. I did not care that they wanted me to cut my hair and I did not care that they did not hire me because I would not cut my hair unless my requirements were met. That did not bother me. 
What bothered me was that he wasted my time and made me believe I got hired and then hung me out to dry. I'm the type that stews on some things and dreams up many different ways to get revenge, but never acts on them. Well, I had my chance a few years later. In the US, when you fill out a W-2, or is it W-4, I always confuse them, at a new job you can elect to have extra money withheld from your check via federal or state taxes. I have always elected to do this because I prefer getting money from taxes versus having to send money in. So I did just that and saved the extra amount every year. Then I got married, had kids and got more money back. Child tax credits are nice, but not a reason to justify having kids. Somewhere around 2012, after I had been driving truck for a few years and making slash saving more money, we were looking at getting a newer vehicle. We still lived in the area and then we drove by that dealership and the memories came flooding back. I had not told her about that because I had honestly forgotten about it, so I spilled the beans and then we concocted a plan that was so devious, so insidious, so deceitful, so I'm kidding. I'm just looking at Theosaurus right now. It was a plan of revenge and vengeance though, I would love to say that I had saved up 100k over the previous few years, but I didn't. Getting married, having kids, etc. tends to cost money. We did have a decent amount saved up and were about to get a settlement from a lawsuit. I sued the former employer for retaliation, so we had about 35k to spend. First I called to see if Tommy still worked there, and he did. This meant the revenge could possibly take place. I called the local PD, informed them that I would be carrying a large amount of cash on me to purchase a vehicle and wanted to know about having an escort, which is $30 per hour for an officer, to provide private security while in uniform. Awesome. I went to the bank, spoke with the manager, informed them I would be making a very large cash withdrawal and then depositing that cash right back in the same account a few hours later the same day. I did not give specifics, but I did inform him that it was a revenge scheme that involved the illusion of making a large purchase. She said, it's your money, you can do whatever you want with it. I got a nice suit, not one of the ones from my MC story, wore my hair down and went to the dealership. I got approached by someone almost immediately and requested Tommy, due to word of mouth from a friend of mine, Tommy comes over and if he recognizes me, he did not show it. Probably not since it had been close to a decade later. We get to talking and I tell him I wanna buy a Volvo to surprise my wife. It's her all time favorite car, very true. I also tell him that I have a 30k budget to pay in cash. I specify that it would be cash, no financing, no check, no money order, cold hard cash. I could see his eyes dancing, I ask if he is commission based since he's the manager and he says he gets a small salary, but he is still expected to sell and he does get commission. He shows me a few here and there, but I insist on a red one. So he shows me this cherry red XC90 with the works. Dual power leather seats, CD player, moonroof and a DVD system to boot. Sticker price was 37k and I told him I was not paying over 30k. Tax title and fees out the door for it. He said he'd see what he could do with the owner, who was called Bill, since it was a trade-in and a six-year-old car. He leaves to talk to the owner and I'm just waltzing around looking at other cars. He comes back with someone else in tow, it is Bill. We get to talking about the price and he is willing to go down a little, but not to my price point. I sighed and told him that due to the issues that particular vehicle had, I felt it was not worth what he wanted. I had done some research and my brother told me all about the recall on certain Volvos, why they were recalled and the complaints from other owners, crash tests results, etc. Bill's eyes got a little white with that, apparently I knew my cars, or rather my brother did, so he left to check some numbers and when he came back, he was willing to part with it for exactly 30k, but not a penny less. I said that was fine, to get whatever paperwork he needed done, as I needed to go to the bank to make the withdrawal and would return the next day. I requested a notary to be present with the title, so it could be notarized in my name and I could go switch the title the same day. I contacted the police, hired an officer for private security and had them meet me at the bank. The officer they sent was someone I went to school with who was called Mike. He questioned why I would not just write a check and I told him he would see why when we go to the dealership. 
So there I am, being escorted by police into the dealership with $30,000 in cash. I go in, ask for Tommy, and we go to Bill's office instead. Tommy is there and someone else who is introduced as the notary. They have all of the necessary paperwork and I insist we go over it before I sign anything. Standard stuff for a used car, bought as is with no warranty implied, hold them harmless, etc. Time for some real acting now. As we are talking I start to give a confused look while looking at Tommy. He asks if I'm okay and I say that he looks familiar and I've been trying to place him since yesterday. I ask if he has worked anywhere else and Bill speaks up and says, Tommy has been the sales manager here at, business name, for 15 years. My eyes go wide. Wait a minute, you were working here back in 02? I think it was 2002 so I'm saying it is. Tommy, yes. Me, I remember you now. I had an interview with you back in 2002 when I was trying to break into car sales. I went through four hours of interviews with you and John. I'm sure you don't remember me. It was a long time ago. Tommy, of course I remember you. I remember the hair. Me, do you remember not hiring me because I would not cut my hair? His eyebrows arch ever so slightly. Bill, what do you mean? I relate the entire encounter. Bill, I'm sorry you had that experience. We do have an image to maintain and men are expected to dress professional. Me, do you have any women on the sales floor, Bill? Bill, we do. Me, do they have long hair, Bill? Tommy, I don't see how that should factor into you buying a car. What is this about? Me, you led me to believe that I was starting a job here, which is what I wanted. You wasted my time and this time it was my fault. I wasted my time. I knew that I knew you, but I could not place you. Bill, this money, I pull out the cash, is now going back into my account and I'll be purchasing a vehicle somewhere else. I refuse to spend money at a business that would do this to potential employees. I put the cash away. So, sorry for wasting your time as well. I get up to leave, the officer follows me and Bill and Tommy try to get me to see reason and I ask the officer to please inform them that I want no further contact with them. He relays that and they shut up. We get back to the bank and after I deposit the cash, Mike tells me I should have moved on and just forgot about it. I shrugged and said maybe, but Tommy is going to have to deal with Bill now, since 30,000 in cash just walked out of the building. I asked if I did anything illegal and he said not that he could think of. I said okay then, thank you for your time officer, I'm releasing you from your obligation to me. I have no idea what the fallout, if any, there was. I imagine there had to be some. I mean, having that much cash just walk out of your business? Yeah, I know, in the long run, it did not amount to much for the profit of the business, but it definitely hit them. Tommy in particular, since he was going to get commission that day and that paycheck. And that is my story of petty slash regular revenge that cost a sales manager a $30,000 sale. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.